I want to write down an imperative version. Factorial of n. I'm going to create my two variables. Let i initialize itself to 1 and m be initialized to 1, similar. We'll create a loop. which has cond greater than i n. If i is greater than n, we're done. And the result is m, the product I'm accumulating. Otherwise, I'm going to write down three things to do. I'm going to set m to the product of i and m. Set i, i to the sum of i and 1, and go around the loop again. Looks very familiar to you Fortran programmers. <clears throat> Else, con define, funny syntax though. Start the loop up. OK, and that's the program. Now this program, how do we think about it? Well, let's just say what we're seeing here. There are two local variables, i and m, that have been initialized to 1. Okay. Every time I land the loop, I test to see if i is greater than n, which is the input argument. And if so, the result is the product being accumulated in m. However, if it's not the end of the loop, if I'm, done, if I'm not done, then what I'm going to do is change the product to be the result of multiplying i times the current product which is sort of what we were doing here. So here I wasn't changing. I was making another copy. Because the substitution model says you copy the body of the procedure with the argument substituted for the formal parameters. Here I'm not worrying about copying. Here I change the value of m. I also then change the value of i to i plus 1 and go buzzing around. Seems like it's essentially the same program. But there are some ways of making errors here that didn't exist until today. For example, if I were to do the horrible thing of writing, not being careful in writing my program and interchange those two assignments, the program wouldn't compute the same function. I get a timing error because there's a dependency that m depends upon having the last value of i. If I try and change i first, then I've got the wrong value of i when I multiply by m. It's a bug that wasn't available until this moment, until we introduced something that had time in it. So as I said, first we need a new model of computation, and second we have to have a damn good reason for doing this kind of ugly thing. Are there any questions? Speak loudly, David. Okay. Um, I'm confused about, we've introduced set now, but we had let before and define before. Uh, I'm confused about the difference between the three. Would, wouldn't define work in the same situation as set if you introduced it? And no, it's define is intended for setting something once the first time, for making it. OK? Mm -hmm. In other words, I, I, you have never seen me write on a blackboard okay, two defines in a row whose intention was to change the old value of some variable to a new one. And is that, is that by convention or? It's, no, it's intention. Okay? I, the answer is that, for example, internal to a procedure, two defines in a row are illegal. Two defines in a row of the same variable. Okay? Executing the same defined twice. Whether or not a system catches that error is a different question. But I, I legislate to you. That define happens once on anything. Now, indeed, in interactive debugging, we intend that you interacting with your computer will redefine things. And so there's a special exception made for interactive debugging. But define, define is intended to mean set up something, okay, which will be forever th that, that value after that point. 
Okay. It's as if all the defines were done at the beginning. In fact, the only legal place to put a define in scheme internal to a procedure is just after, at the beginning of a lambda expression, okay, which is the, in, the beginning of the body of a procedure. Now, okay. uh, what now about let, let, of course, does, does nothing like either of that. I mean, if you look at what's happening with a let, this happens again exactly once. It sets up a context where i and m are val have values 1 and 1. That context exists throughout this, this scope, this region of the program. Okay. However, you don't think of that let as, creating an, as, as setting i again. It doesn't change it. i never changes because of the let. i gets created because of the let. In fact, the let is a very simple idea. The let does nothing more. Uh, let a variable 1 to have value 1. Let me write this down a little bit more neatly. Let's write var 1 have value, the value of expression e1, and variable 2 have this value of the expression e2. In an expression e3 is the same thing as a procedure of var1 and var2 being formal parameters and e3 being the body where var1 is bound to the value of e1 and var2 gets the value of e2. So this is, in fact, a perfectly understandable thing from a substitution point of view. This is really the same expression written in two different ways. In fact, the way the actual system works is this gets translated into this before anything happens. OK, I'm still unclear as then what makes the difference between a let and a define. They could a, define a define is a syntactic sugar whereby essentially a bunch of variables be created by lets and then set up once. OK, time for the first break, I think. Thank you. <coughs> Let me get this. Seven. How long was that?